Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, I'm going to be telling you guys about six things you might not have known about Grand Theft Auto Online, including some hidden details, secret features, and a whole lot more. So I typically don't like doing oddball numbers like six, but these are all so really cool, and I didn't want to exclude one of them just to uh, make this five or something like that. So we're going to be talking about six really unique things in this video. If you found at least one of these new or helpful, I would love it if you would drop a like. That would be awesome. And let me know in the comment section down below if you know any sort of secret or hidden details like this that probably a lot of people don't know about in Grand Theft Auto Online. But of course, without the way, let's not waste any more time and let's get it started. All right, so the first thing you might not have known about actually revolves around the Kraken submarine. Now, the submarine is not used a whole lot in Grand Theft Auto Online. I, maybe it's because Rockstar made it a Pegasus vehicle or it's hard to get to, or maybe there's just not a whole lot to do in the ocean and online. I rarely, and I I mean rarely see someone in an online lobby just floating around or in the ocean in a crack and you almost never see something like that. However, there is an extremely weird property about this submarine that I don't necessarily know would be useful in any sort of situation, but who knows, it might just save your life sometime down the line. And that is the fact that the Kraken is 100% bulletproof. Now, this doesn't mean that it's indestructible because it eventually will blow up, but I've got my friend John here and we're actually going to test this out so we tested it out in both roles. The first time he jumped in the submarine and I started shooting him and you can see I'm using a giant LMG here and I'm just unloading on that front glass window and he is taking no damage nor is he getting hurt at all. So I thought that this was extremely weird that maybe the most bullet resistant vehicle in the game is actually a Kraken and one that you'll probably never encounter in the roads or you probably at least shouldn't encounter on the roads. But And like I said, I don't know when this is ever going to be useful or ever going to be needed. Maybe if you're getting shot out in the ocean. But you take no damage inside the Kraken when you're getting shot at, which is super cool. And it looks even more unique from the perspective of the person inside of the submarine. So John and I, we switched our roles right here. And now I'm inside the submarine and you can see sort of the effects that it's uh, having on the hull itself. It seems to push the submarine back a little bit. So it almost recoils a bit. Uh, but you can see we're taking no damage here on the inside, which is super neat. Now, as I mentioned earlier, eventually the Pegasus vehicle will be recalled because you will do enough damage to it to be destroyed, but I still think this is pretty unique, and I had no clue that this would happen. I just assumed that it would break like any of the other windows we see on other vehicles and helicopters and planes in Grand Theft Auto Online. So I thought that was super unique. All right, up next, I'm going to be telling you guys how you can make a poor man's Karen Technical. So you guys know the Karen Technical was that pickup truck with the mounted MG gun on the back. It was added with the heist update. I'm pretty sure it's around like a million dollars, which is pretty expensive. Well, I'm going to be telling you guys how you can make a poor man's one with a vehicle that was also added in the heist update, and that is the Vapid Guardian. Now, the Vapid Guardian is a pretty unique truck. Uh, it can actually seat six people, which is more than most trucks. You can have four people on the inside of the cab and then two people on the outside sitting on those kind of like black boxes. Well, I'm going to be telling you guys in this video how you can actually get more than six people in there. Now, the Guardian has a very unique property where you can actually stand in the back and it's not going to make you fall out. So typically, we only see this on vans, ambulances, tractor trailers. We don't really see this on trucks. In fact, the Vapid Guardian is the only truck that can do something like this, where if you do jump in the back, you won't fall out. So you can see we're doing this test right here. I'm driving. John's in the back. He's got his gun. He's firing. And like I said, you could make this almost a poor man's Karen Technical with seven people that could get inside. And this could be pretty cool. Imagine if you had a driver, a passenger, the two people in the back seat, and the two people in the truck bed, and then you standing up on the truck bed itself firing a minigun. That would be a pretty cool sight to see uh, going around Los Santos. Now, I will not lie, it does not give you the best cover at all. You're pretty much a sitting duck if, if really anyone can pick you off, but I still think that was pretty unique and pretty cool. And what's also nice about this is you can actually kind of shoot through the front of the truck. I noticed that when using the minigun, you didn't necessarily have to aim over the truck. As long as you weren't like pointing the minigun straight down, you could still shoot forward, which is actually pretty unique and pretty awesome. So you can use this trick with the Vapid Guardian to kind of create that poor man's Karen technical. And it can also save you a good bit of money because I think the Guardian is like 
$600,000 cheaper than the technical, which is super nice. All right, up next, we're going to be doing a little bit of myth busting regarding the new Deadline Tron suits. So these suits are very expensive. They're $200,000 each. And there's been a rumor going around that the helmet on each one of those Tron suits is more bulletproof than other outfits, which might indicate why it's $200,000. However, that is not the case. In case you guys didn't know, if you put any helmet on in Ground Theft Auto Online, it's going to give you one bullet worth of resistance. So if you're shot in the head, it won't kill you. However, if you're shot in the head a second time, it will kill you. And in this video, I'm just gonna prove that the Deadline helmets are no stronger than any of the other helmets in the game. So you can see that I have died there with two shots to the head wearing the Deadline suit. I'm now going to switch to another helmet. I think this is just like the burst helmet that was added with cunning stunts. And you can see I have the exact same effect right here. I'm shot once in the head, I live and then the second bullet is going to kill me. So it doesn't matter what helmet you have on, whether it's the deadline one or whether it's another one in the game, they're basically going to provide one bullet resistance before it kills you, which is still better than nothing because if you have no helmet on and you're shot in the head, it is going to completely kill you in one shot. There's no doubt about it. So does the deadline helmet still provide the same bulletproof resistance as all the other helmets? Yes, it does. But is it more unique or special or provide greater bullet resistance? It does not. It is the same as all of the other helmets are in the game. All right, moving on to number four, and I actually noticed this the other day when we were doing our Yuga Classic van live stream. On that live stream, I said you could bring any sort of van you wanted, uh, whether it's the Yuga Classic, the regular Yuga, the Rumpo, or even a Br the Bravado Paradise, which I recalled came out in like the Beach Bum update, the very first update in the game. And someone from that live stream actually brought a Bravado Paradise with the shark livery on there. And it actually got me to notice something during the live stream itself. So if you buy the Bravado Paradise with the shark livery, one of the things you'll notice is that on the livery itself is a glowing UFO kind of at the bottom of the ocean. And when I first saw that, I was like, I wonder if Rockstar did that on purpose or if that was kind of an Easter egg right there. And it does seem to be a nod to one of the very interesting Easter eggs in the game. You guys know in Grand Theft Auto V single player, one of the UFOs can actually be found at the bottom of the ocean. So this seems to be a reference to that right there. Now on the Bravado Paradise itself, that UFO is kind of glowing of sorts. I don't know if Rockstar was just doing that just because, but I'm pretty sure the one at the bottom of the ocean is not glowing in game. So that's definitely very interesting. And I had no idea that that was a thing until we did that live stream the other day. And and I saw someone who brought the Bravado Paradise and I was like, man, that livery is super cool. But then I noticed kind of out of the corner of my eye that UFO and it finally kind of clicked to me that, yeah, that does look like it was an indication and a reference towards one of those mysterious UFOs at the bottom of the Grand Theft Auto V Ocean. All right, up next at the number five spot, do you guys remember a couple weeks ago when we were at the airport and I told you guys about those mysterious doors that had the 2013, 2014, and 2021 labels on them? And I said this could be a hint towards the release of the next Grand Theft Auto game, maybe Grand Theft Auto 6. It was a pretty cool theory and video. I'm not sure if it's going to turn out to be true or not. Some people are saying that's when Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to come out, 2021. Well, it looks like there's another reference to the release date of a past Grand Theft Auto, this time on the train. So if you're able to get onto the train and you make your way to the front, there should be two little like brackets you're looking for, two little banners or signs. One of them says LS. And the other one says 2004. Now you might not think of anything of that 2004, but it is actually a reference to the release date of GTA San Andreas. San Andreas came out in 2004. It obviously takes place in Los Santos and in the world and realm of San Andreas. So I thought that that was a really cool reference and a really cool Easter egg right there. I almost guarantee you that's what they were talking about. They wouldn't have just placed a random number right there. Rockstar knows exactly what they're doing when they mention anything regarding San Andreas. So so that's pretty cool. That can actually be found on the train. And finally, last but not least today, I'm going to be showing you guys a pretty cool launch glitch. This one actually takes place at Martin Madrazzo's mansion. So at the Madrazzo mansion, you've got these like three garages that are stacked off to the right. One of them is open, like maybe 25% open. And it actually has a really volatile reaction when you take a bike and you run it straight into this garage. Now, I'm not going to say this launch glitch is going to work every time. In fact, it may be worked about 5 or 10% of the time, but the 5 or 10% of the time that it does work, you get some pretty amazing reactions and your character gets sent straight up into the sky and then eventually falls straight down to the ground. So in order to do this, you don't need to do anything special. You don't have to lean back or forward. 
dashboard. You just run into this garage and sometimes you will get sent sky high into the world. And it is pretty crazy to see your character go up and then kind of just land right back down as if nothing happened to them. Sometimes they'll pull out a parachute, which I think is pretty fun. And this would be awesome if you could like all synchronize a group of people doing it at the same time and getting launched up in the air. So I figured you guys would like this and maybe you could try it out in some of your own Grand Theft Auto Online sessions. That's pretty cool. And it's a fun little new launch glitch that can actually be found at the Martin Madrazo Mansion. But really, that's all the information I have for you guys in this video today. Six cool hidden things you might not have known about Grand Theft Auto Online. Let me know in the comment section down below if you know of anything new that I didn't mention or something that you would find interesting that I may cover in a future video. If you found one new thing helpful from this video, be sure to drop it a like rating. That would be awesome. As well as subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.